Hello there everybody, it's me TechnoJock back with another TechnoJock tutorial. We're looking at some more applied energistics and this time we're looking at ways of expanding your network using quantum rings and some tips and tricks about getting the most out of the channels on your network. First up then, quantum rings, what are they? What do they do? Well, they're a way of connecting your ME network up to a remote location. They transmit wirelessly. So uh, you can have your secondary base um, thousands of blocks away, um, or right next to you, it doesn't really matter, um, or even in another dimension. And that doesn't matter if it's the nether or something you've made yourself in RF tools. Basically, this will work in any dimension that I have found, certainly. Make yourself a ring of the quantum rings like this, and then put the quantum link chamber in the middle and you'll see the multi-block forms like that. It can go vertically like that or if we come over here you can even make it horizontally like so. Connects up no bother at all and you connect it using some form of cabling um, be that the smart cable we've got here, we've got dense cable over there, or even just the normal glass fiber cable connects up to it. But it does need to be on the middle blocks here on the ring, not the corners and not the quantum link chamber. You can connect it up to any of the three faces that are available, be them on the side or on the front, whatever doesn't matter. I would suggest that you use dense cable though, because these can transmit up to 32 channels. And uh, they're quite expensive, so you're probably going to be wanting to use as, m as many of those channels um, as you can. But uh, there's nothing stopping you from just using the, the normal cable and only transmitting eight at a time, depending on your system. Now, if you were so inclined, you could actually connect up multiple of these rings to your network, and you could have this ring here connected up to this little network here, and say this other network here, this uh, other spur coming out here connected up to another network out in that direction. And you need to do it in that way because these work as a matched pair. This one's speaking to that one, and that one's speaking to the one way off, whatever it is. So how does this one know that it only speaks to that one and not that one, or maybe another one somewhere else, or even the one in somebody else's base? Well, that's where a little bit more infrastructure comes in. We need a couple of quantum entangled singularities to pair them together. And to make that, or those, you need a matter condenser. Just a single block machine. It doesn't need any power. It doesn't need any networking from the ME network there. All it needs is a 64K ME storage component, just the component, not the drive, but it does need to be the 64K one because it needs 256,000 items. Uh, so take your matter condenser, condenser and set it onto this setting. It starts off just destroying items, so you don't want to be doing that. Um, and we don't want the matter balls at the moment, those are for the paintball gun. Just pop it onto this setting take your storage component and pop it in there and feed in 256,000 items that you will never see again. I have it connected up to a creative chest at the moment, feeding in cobblestone. I would suggest a cobble gen and or the overflow from, say, a tree farm or a mob farm, something like that. Certainly items that you don't care if you're never going to see again. And it will be feeding them in slowly but surely here. And eventually you will end up with a singularity like that. You need to split this then to make it into a quantum entangled singularity pair. And to do that, you'll need some tiny TNT. To do the quantum entangling bit though, you need some ender dust. Ender dust being crushed up ender pearls. Now, depending on what mods you have installed along with applied energistics, there's obviously quite a few different mods use crushed up ender pearls in one guise or another. So the easiest way to do it is just to use the quartz grindstone from applied energistics, pop an ender pearl in, give it a few turns of the crank handle, and out will pop some ender dust. There we go. And as you can see, this one is Ore Dictionary with the Tech Reborns version of crushed up ender pearls. And I happen to know that in this pack, which is the Feed the Beast Beyond pack that I'm using, um, you can take an ender pearl and you can feed it through a sag mill and it comes out as nine ender pearl 
powder from that. So just make sure you're using the right thing to do the job here. So take your tiny TNT. This is um, important to use a tiny TNT because this doesn't blow up items. Might knock them off into the world as item entities, but you won't actually lose the item. So pop those two things down there, give it a redstone signal, and in just a second, there you go, you end up with your two quantum entangled singularities. Brilliant. We'll pop the lever back down there. Don't know why I've got that. And we'll do a little bit of inventory management. Now we could pop them straight into our quantum rings there and they would work quite happily but I would strongly suggest that you take them over to an anvil first and name them something sensible. So say mountain base and then when and if you decide to install more quantum rings then it's very apparent when you come over to your your rings and have a look in them. Oh, this one's connected up to the mountain base. So it makes channel management a lot easier. We'll pop this in over here and everything's hunky-dory. Uh -uh. No, we don't have any power over here. This needs to be connected up to there to get power. So what I would suggest that you do is you get yourself a dense energy cell and you connect it up. So we'll charge it up like that. And it's got 3.2 million in it. And then if we connect this up here, it will immediately power this system up. There we go, lights are on. And now that it's actually connected up, it will keep this charged up as well. So there we go, we've got access to our storage over here. Excellent. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Moving on then to some channel management tips and tricks. Over here we've got our little sub-network in our remote base and we've already started using up some of the channels here to do some processing stuff. I've got a furnace set up and already we're using three of these channels. Uh, we've got one that is pulling out the stone as it's being made, we've got one putting coal into the furnace on the side, and we've got another one putting the cobblestone in at the top. So this is hugely wasteful, and we've only got one machine sorted out. And as soon as we start adding in other things here, we could, uh, we could maybe set up this sag mill that we've got over here to make us gravel and sand and stuff. And as soon as we start going over here, we can go, well, we're going to want to import the uh, the products that it's making and um, we come over for here from the top we'll put more cobblestone in that way as well, we'll get some grab some cobblestone and program it up so it's taking the cobblestone and putting it into our sag mill and there it goes it's already working making us cobblestone uh, making us uh, gravel and sand and flint and stuff there we go now we're using five channels. A couple more machines and we're going to have no channels left over here and that is rubbish. So we need to do something different. Let's take all of this down and do something different. So first of all, we've got our outputs. Well, our outputs can all go into a single chest back here. And we can instead go like this along and... Uh, I need to go to the bottom here, but if I say that's extracting all was active, that's extracting all was active, that's going into this chest here, and we are now golden. Fill that back in, and our stuff's going in there. So we could put our uh, import bus on here, and there we've half the number of channels that we need to actually draw the stuff into our our network. There we go. And if we were to have more machines along here, we're not adding any more channels for any of the raw materials to be pulled in because they all just go into this one chest. So there's a massive big difference. It doesn't make a huge difference, obviously, when it's just two machines, but when you're talking about maybe five or six machines instead of five or six channels, that's well, if you're talking eight machines, you would use up all of the channels here eight machines on this, and we're still using just one channel to get our our products back into the system. So that's a lot better. Now, also, both of these machines are using cobblestone as their raw material in. 
So we could do something about that as well. We could say, right, okay, well, we want to go along here. And that's going to go in. And that's going to go in. And we could put our chest on the side there. And we could have our input like that with uh, with cobblestone going in. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something slightly differently here. Which is a little tip for you because what we're going to do is... I'm going to go and do that. And we're going to say, well, that one... We want cobblestone. I'm going to grab some coal as well while I'm here. And say, well, we're only going to be putting cobble into the top of that furnace, and we're only going to be putting cobble into our sag mill. Nothing else. So let's just say we will do that. And connect it up. And in fact, say like that because we now have 64 cobble being stocked in this at any one time and we are already pulling out and putting into this or we should be when I turn that on and there we go that's already gone up and that is already going up as well. So we're supplying both of these with one. And now the only thing that we need now to do is to connect this up so we get coal into here. And I'm going to do that now. There we go. We've got coal stocked in here and we can go like this. We will disconnect this. And we're going to go insert here. And we'll take one of those. We're only going to insert coal. And that turns on. Get rid of that. And we should now have this filled up as well. Yep. There it goes. Excellent. So now, just by using two channels, we've got the two machines on. And if we so wished, we could put another, uh, another machine here. Let's say we've got more stuff going onto this network. We can connect up with a little bit more conduit. We'll say that's going to be always active extract like that and we will connect it up with a little bit of power. So we've now got power in this system and we're going to put this on here. Now disconnect that for the moment because I don't want cobblestone to go in here. Let's say, just for the sake of this, we're going to say that we want to put iron ore. Let's get some, let's get some ore of some description. Gold ore. There we go. We'll just do some gold ore. So we're going to want to put the gold in there. So we'll put our filter and say gold goes into there, and we will connect that back up like that, and we can say we'll put gold in here. Now when we put the gold into our storage system it immediately goes in. Let's grab another few of these and it's stocking that there and that's going all the way over to here. If we take this out of here it's only going to be cobblestone that ever goes in there. It's only going to be gold that ever goes in here. There we go. It was all just stocking that back up. So that adds a third machine on that's doing something different from these two machines, but it's still only using two channels. Excellent. Now, you're seeing me put stuff back in through here, but the reason that we're not inputting stuff in here is because we've got... other machines that are connected up here, what can happen is if you start using the same interface as your output as well as your input, you can sometimes have machines drawing that in. So I've had situations where I've got um, something that's making cobblestone and then it goes into the system and then it goes to a different machine where I didn't want it to go to necessarily. So you've just got to be careful with what you do. That's why I've got an output chest and an import from there and I'm not using another interface. 
but uh, we could actually get rid of this and just put an interface in here like this and that would work just as well. There, it's going back into the system like so, no bother at all. So interface or import bus both work just as well. Um, and that's that really for that kind of network. That's it for just now, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you've got any more suggestions, anything you want to see in more detail, any ideas that you'd want to see done, then please just give me a shout. Details for my Twitter and for my Facebook, etc. are down below, so give us a shout. Let us know in the comment section what you thought of this, and I shall see you the next time. Bye-bye, and have a fun.